Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. is still in the description below. It is still your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Reach out to me directly. I am T Masso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we discuss a model that launched in 2011, and if there is a definitive version of the millinery, this is it. This is the Millinery 4101, named after its caliber. It is part of the second generation of a larger Millinery that followed on the 1995 original created by designer Emmanuel Get. Now, the watch is 47 millimeters in diameter, but don't let that phase you. It doesn't wear that way. That is a lengthwise measurement. If you were to measure it from lug tip to lug tip, 49.3 millimeters or less than a Rolex Daytona with solid end links. In profile, fairly thin. The watch measures 13.1 millimeters thick and it's got a broad and proportional 24 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So throw it on the wrist and you can see that it's long down the wrist. It seems every generation has its oval watch and this has been the case since we've had wrist watches. This is a watch you can wear on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference because the short and quickly tapered lugs don't hang out over the edge and it is thin enough to fit under a dress cuff. So while it's an extravagant and flamboyant dress watch, it's still viable with a formal sleeve and formal attire. Again, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. The strap is very close hauled to the case, but you can see how closely drilled the lugs are to the case band. Now this close drilled architecture allows the pivot centers of the strap to be inboard at the end of the lugs and a full unencumbered range of motion thanks to the use of a curved spring bar. So you get outstanding fit and range of motion, which is important on a small wrist that might be borderline sized for this since you can pull the strap straight down around that tiny wrist. Now you can see it is beautifully made with lugs that are created separate from the case and then welded on, a very old school process that requires slow going and hand finishing to remove evidence of the weld and create this relatively creased and sharp joint between the case and the lugs, which again started as separate pieces. The lug hoods are polished. You can see their edges are also fluted to break up their sheer mass and profile. There's a little bit of tumble home off to the side in profile, they are vertically satinated, whereas the case band is longitudinally satinated. So not only do we have the contrast between polished and satin, but the satination patterns are at right angles to each other. Now you can see the case band swells out a little bit, giving the watch a lot of definition and form. It's a shapely thing that catches the eye from almost every angle. We have a crown that is exclusive to this model. It was created specifically for it. AP logo, a faceted edge, and a nice sharp knurling that's a pleasure to grip. The inner bezel has a vertical lip out board and then a sloped polished profile, giving way to a crystal that matches the shape of the watch and the shape of the movement. This egg-shaped movement is unique to this model. It was never used on any different AP, and that's pretty self-evident. You can also see that it is properly sized and shaped for the watch, which is a rarity even when a company, as with AP, has the ability to make its movements in-house. Now, a lot of the actions on the dial side is this is basically a inverted version of a 3120 with some architectural changes. Now, the dial has rose gold applique radially arrayed and somewhat warped, selectively warped, Roman numerals, including a watchmaker's four, as that's called. We have skeletonized alpha-style hands, and then a faceted alpha hand for the small second, a la FP Journe. We have dial-side assembly screws, including on the dial, which gives it a handsome look. There's a concentric pattern, albeit off-centered, on the primary dial, and there's a sunburst silver. It is beautifully detailed with fine finishing flourishes on dial, hands, and movement components. Now, this features one detail that you will not find on a 3120, which is an overcoil hairspring. So in any position with relatively centered and even mass across all 360 degrees, that hairspring will breathe concentrically, giving this watch outstanding ability to achieve isochronic performance in any physical position. Now it beats away 
at 3 hertz, so 21,600 vibrations per hour. Automatic winding on a bi-directional rotor with ceramic bearings. It has a 60-hour power reserve. It does not feature hacking, but that's okay. This isn't really that kind of watch. There is very little dead angle in the crown. From almost the second you start moving it, the hands jump. The watch is 30 meters water resistant, but being a dress watch, you'll never really test that theory. On the reverse side, you can see the rotor with the coats of arms of the Audemars and Piguet families, reminding you that this company is the oldest Swiss watch brand continuously owned and run by the founding families. All this pivots on 34 jewels. You can see the regulator from the underside. You can see that there are several different finishes on the rotor. On the bridges and plates, we have circular Cote de Genève on the winding bridge. We have black polished screws, that is their mirror polished on their heads, engine turned perlage. You can see on the edge of the bridges, we have primarily machine finished beveling, but it's handsome, neat, and worthwhile to see. On the dial side, we have a rose gold gilded balance bridge and a free sprung balance architecture. Those two features being dual anchored with a screw on each side and free sprung makes for a very shock tolerant movement. Even though this isn't a sports watch, it has that core genetic similarity to the sports watch 3120 movement. And then we have a combination of linear stripes as opposed to the circular stripes on the back. More black polished screws. And you can see different sizes of engine turned perlage across the base plate structure. A beautiful watch, and as I said, launched in 2011, this could have been the definitive Audemars Piguet dress watch. Did they fail to promote? Did they give up too soon? Did they cut bait when they went with the Code 1159? Was it a mistake? Let me know in the description below. For all your purchase and pricing questions, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.